Hey everybody, how we doing today? So welcome to Suzuki Outboard Day. So uh, I think I've got a plan. So we're gonna be working on these guys. Um, first thing I'm going to do today is build a engine stand for this six horsepower one, the oddball. Uh, this stand, the way I've got it, works great for these little Suzuki 2.5s, but this six horsepower is twice the weight of these and it's kind of flexing on its own. So this one, I'm just gonna build a, a separate engine stand for it particular. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to probably cut down this rack here so it's enough to hold just the four outboards I have. So probably half the size, so it won't take up so much space. And that'll be just to kind of get everything organized. Anyways, that's our plan for today. I think uh, maybe I'll show you the quick uh, engine build, get that on the stand, and then that'll be good enough for today's. So let's get to it. I used the same stand over there with these guys. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just take the head off my uh, flay table top off. We'll clean that stuff off. Take the flay table top off, and then I could hang the four smaller ones on there. This one I'll just put on the ground, and then I'll use this to kind of build my... Uh, outboard stand so let's get this moved over all right we've got it all cleaned off here uh this is a, will be about the right size which is my fillet station uh mounts there uh but that'll hold four outboards just fine that's all i need it for uh so i can just cut this down to basically those parameters but for now i'll use this as my uh, kind of workstation for building my uh outboard stand for this guy here so uh yeah let's get building so i'm gonna just do this pretty quick and easy uh, i don't need anything fancy so this is my pcb stand that i made for my little two and a half and so it works fine it's not even glued uh but i've been using those for years they work great but that's basically the design i needed to make but just out of wood and a little bit taller for that outboard uh so i've got a couple of two by fours one two by six which I'll use for the actual clamp mounts because it needs to be a little bit thicker. But uh, that should be good. Got some three inch uh, number 12 uh, wood screws. I've got a uh, handsaw, jigsaw, and a uh, power drill screwdriver. So uh, I think that'll be all I'll need there. Um, this is kind of the design, two legs, and something that sits straight up, and then a crossbar there. So uh, let's go ahead and do some quick measurements and start cutting. Now I want to keep this thing as compact as possible. This is my other stand and it's really not too far off. I could actually use that same height um, from the ground to the top of the bracket where that's going to butt up against the top of the uh, mount there. It's uh, 26 and a half inches. I just need a few inches to keep it off the ground. So I think what I might do is just round it off to 30 inches. Uh, this stand is basically around 29, so an inch taller than that. And then that'll give me three and a half inches of floor clearance between that and the outboard. That way I'm not having to lift it to get it on the mount. And I'll keep it nice and compact. And it doesn't have to be really rigid because it's kind of compact. So I think that'll work. So we'll just cut it 30 and then I'll just keep it square, go 30 by 30. That's there. And just make it a square basically. All right, I think we got our measurements. All right, so I just need to cut 30 inches off and then that'll get my table, workstation, engine stand uh, a little bit better position, so. Mark off 30. All right, hand saw. Saw wins. 
all right, I think I know the general measurements I need, so I'm gonna just cut the sections out that I know I need right now, and then I'm gonna build this inside on the flat floor so I know I'm doing it level. So I'm gonna cut these up, get a few pieces going, and then we'll move inside. All right, I think I got the general pieces and the general layout figured out how I'm gonna do it. I changed it up, but then again, I didn't really have a set plan. But uh, that's kind of the layout there. I think that'll work okay. And then uh, once I have this finished, then I just need to put a uh, cross brace on either side. So it'll just go from here and then against there, and that'll be it. Uh, the other thing is I might offset this this way because the mo uh, motor sits on will, will be sitting on this side and this will be the heavier side that I'll pull from. So uh, that'll give me room for a bucket or whatever container I'm going to be using for a water catchment for running the motor. But I think that's a good design there. Uh, triangulated it there and then bracing the actual uh, cross member that the motor is going to be sitting by sitting on top of that which will definitely be uh, secure so it can't uh, push down at all and then everything will be just flush to uh, the floor there so uh, it should be easy to line up and then boom boom bunch of screws bunch of screws and then once i have that then i'll just cross member it and i think we're good Let's get this into the air conditioning. Oh, and uh, one more cross member or two more cross members. Probably just one cross member will do. Just so that it keeps it square. So these can't twist at all. So just across there or across there. And that should be good. Alright, we're in air conditioning. Much nicer. I've got the pieces kind of cut down and ready to go. So now I'll start to, to assemble it. So I'm going to take a look at uh, areas that I can assemble as much as possible and keep the alignment without having to kind of do any major twisting adjustments so i think this section here since it's all going to be just squared off and combined i could build this unit as one right now just separately and then then add the two wings there and then i'll do a cross brace and then I'll put the uh, diagonals. So that order should work out good. Yeah, so I can build this on its own and just use the, the side as being flush and then drill it together. All right, so that's our plan. All right, so this centerpiece is pretty much done. Now I just need to attach it to the legs. Um, I'm using the table to keep my uh, uh, boards parallel so it's squared there and on that side and then butted to the uh, back side there so I know it's squared. Then I took measurements from the end to the side plate here and just found a uh, good length which is going to be 10 inches on this side. So it'll be 20 inches on that side, but uh, these are squared, 10 and 10, so that's good. So I'll just run a couple of screws on this side, in that side, and then that'll be ready to go. I decided to go ahead and put both cross braces. Um, I had four extra screws, so I'm going to go ahead and put one in the front, one in the back. If I ever go to casters, wheels on the bottom, It'll need that support, so uh, might as well put them in. I didn't check to see if it the swing out will hit this, but it's just one screw on each side, so go ahead and finish this off here. All right, that is good. I mean, it is solid right now. It isn't going anywhere, uh, especially when I went with four bolts for both of these. It's not twisting or anything, but I do have the four bolt screws left over that... Uh, I set aside for this, so now it's just putting a brace. Well, is this the motor? I guess it wouldn't get in the way. Just some sort of bracing here or here. Let me figure out how to best do that. Because I got to cut an angle and see. If 
I just cut this angle, measure it, duplicate it on that side, it'll be square so it'll stick out, and then I can use the jigsaw, or I could use the handsaw and just cut it down. Yeah, that'll work. That'll be easy. One angle I gotta figure out. All right, I cut these uh, side supports here, corner supports. So I'll just do one screw there, one screw there. We'll be good. Boom, we're done. 24 screws. I have one left over out of that 12, 25 pack and it has a messed up tip. But that'll go to my somewhere I need extra support. <laughs> but uh, that worked out perfectly there. So bam, sturdy as a rock. So let's go test it out. Boom. That is perfect. Oh God, it's like, it's going nowhere. Got full turning. Nice. know how to kick this thing up. Oh, there. Oh, these things are locked up. Oh. Yeah, I handle it, no problem. it is done look at that bad boy be able to do the water so fresh water wash down nice and solid ah, bam looky there yeah it took about an hour changing plans as I went but Nice, compact, solid. Doesn't need to be any bigger than it is. And then if I want to upgrade, now that I have those braces, I could put uh, wheels on it, casters, but I don't foresee rolling it on this stuff, so I don't really have a sidewalk to run it on, but it's pretty light because it's compact, so I could slide the mount around. Beautiful. Look at that, isn't that a pretty picture? All nice and neat and organized. <laughs> Bam. All right, moving on. All right, got things cleaned up a bit now. So I got the motors there, new motor and engine stand, small motor engine stand for the little 2.5s. Tear things apart, spread them out here on my workbench. We're good to go there. But during the day, I don't work out here because it's just too hot, so. I've got this same setup inside here and I can lay my stuff out and just work on the motors here. So air conditioning, baby. All right, that concludes our Suzuki outboard day, building an engine stand. Uh, next up, uh, we're gonna break in the brand new uh, Suzuki 2.5. And then I'll do another video as well at the same time is uh, rebuilding the newly acquired 2.5. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.